Hello and welcome to Tim's Desk London. Uh, today I'm going to do a review of the new release from Wingnut Wings. This is the Green Tail Trilogy. This contains three kits of the Albatross, uh, which is a D5 or a D5A. They're called the Jaster 5. Uh, so in this kit, you sorry, in this boxing, you get three kits to uh, to to build whichever variants you want to in there. Uh, what's different, slight different to the other wingnut kits of the Albatross is you can build out of this box a D a D5 or a D and the D5A. The previous boxings have been just a D5 or a D5A. So you get both variants of that type in there. You also get some wonderful decals and color schemes for this one it's really really good um so i'll show you through the instructions in a bit uh, i'll show you through the, the plastic i'll go through everything because there's lots of duplicates of just sprues in there so you can get an idea of what you get uh, the box is big compared to your normal wing nut wings box uh, they usually sort of come along here and down about here that's the, that's their usual sort of size so this is a lot bigger as you get pretty much two boxes in one on this one. The artwork on the front is just beautiful. Uh, I mean, you you nearly want to uh, frame pretty much all of these pieces of uh, boxes because they just look so good. Uh, in fact, I think once I've built this one, I think I probably will try and find a, uh, a frame to pop that in because it's just beautiful. Absolutely wonderful artwork. They really are, really are. Um, so... On the box, you get uh, usual guides, um, high quality plastic moulds on the side there with the different instructions. Sorry, languages and instructions. <laughs> uh, there's the end of the box, model number 32701. There's the schemes in here. So you get a good amount. On here this is the one that is actually owned by Peter Jackson down in um, New Zealand uh, I think it's a complete rebuild of that version but that's the one they've got down there it looks wonderful some really good paint schemes on there uh, I know I'm gonna be building uh, I know I'm gonna be building that variant <laughs> just you got to with that checker down the side you got to do that one uh, and I think I may be doing the one that Peter Jackson's got, or I'll be doing the dragon up there. Um, one of these kits in here I've actually sold to my friend. As is, as there's three kits in one, I didn't think I was actually going to build would build have a chance to build all three. Uh, and one of my friends, um, Northern Modeler, uh, he said I'll buy one of the kits off you. So we're sort of splitting the kit. Uh, now, if you if you or a couple of your friends are into building, would like to build one of these. It's a really good idea. I've got this from Veterans Models, uh, £155 posted. So it works out you're paying just over £50 a kit, which in wingnut terms is actually really good value. So if you've got a couple of friends that would quite happily go split the uh, price of it, you could all work out to so get a real good kit at a real good price. Uh, that's what I chose to do. Well, I'm, I'll say I'm going to be building two. I may be doing these two from the box art here, um, but we'll see. We'll see how the uh, when the when the build actually comes to it. We'll see what we end up building. So let's crack the box open and see what we get. Okay, let's lift the lid on this. So in here, two compartments. You've got instruction booklet. I've been flicking through this uh, yesterday as ever wonderful i'll give a quick go through on there in a minute so we can have a better look in there plastic wise like i said you get three of each sprue so there's three sprues for the fuselage you get three sprues for the engine you actually get six for the wheels you need two sprues per plane three clear parts Three loads of wings. It's quite a nice size, this one. It's not actually stupidly big. I'll measure that up once we uh, crack them open. And then you have your three uh, few, uh, ailerons, internals, pieces of engine, struts on there. 
and then you have your decal. <laughs> I'd say decal sheet, sheets, multiple sheets. I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot in here. There's a lot, which is really quite cool. Uh, and then you get your photo watch in there for it. Um, so let me move this to one side, and we'll have a quick go through the instructions first of all, so you can see what's you're going to be building. Okay, so in the instructions, uh, these will be slightly different to the other variants of the boxes because you get you, you can build two versions in here. I'll show you what the difference is with those bits there. Uh, so as always, you start out with the fronts with the colour callouts. Uh, again, Tamiya, Humbrol, Federal Standard colour callouts for those. Um, so that's, that's not too bad. You've got to do some mixing for some of the colours, but nothing too difficult really for that one. So that's fine. Uh, you lay out your sprues, which variants, uh, which parts you're not going to need to use on there. Photo which shows you every three of everything or six of everything on those ones. Uh, and then it shows your decals down here. Uh, now it doesn't look a lot there, but you've got to remember you have three of these sheets, three of these sheets, three of these sheets. Although you don't use all of this area here. So there's a lot of uh, not needed... Um, sheet there which is a bit of a shame it's a shame they could have maybe tried to put them onto like one sheet and only done one of them uh, that's, that's what it is that's what it is all right i mean you've got all your markings on there and you've got an extra little one for the dragon's flames which looks really quite cool um so i have a little zoom in there we go so your first section here is building up your fuselage the seat area and uh, fixing that in uh, there are lozenge which are these colors down here to put onto the internals uh, as they would have used the same fabric that was on the outside as the inside to make up the bulk like a rear bulkhead area there uh, you've got to pay attention to seat belt locations on there and what you will see in here a lot is all of these letters now these are for the different variants which are at the back so there you, there's your K, G, A, B, C, D there. You've got to pick, before you even start doing this sections, very, from the very word go on the instructions, you need to know which version you're building. So it depends which which lozenge you're putting on the internals. So that is that's probably, although you start at the front, you nearly have to start at the back and here's the instructions to decide which variant you're going to be doing. Um, yeah, do your, do your cockpit, do your seat belts onto the seat. Again, different stalk controls. So, which variant are you doing on there again? Uh, putting your dials in, putting the tachometer and the uh, gun mounts for the spound guns. I'm, I'm, I could be saying that completely wrong, there's a good chance of it. You've got there your cockpit continued, which now gives you your ammo cases for the two machine guns, where they sit on there. As always, they give you some lovely photos, so you get an idea of how they look in real life. And these are real-time real -time photos, not the replica, replica one. Uh, then we come up to starting doing the rigging for the internals. Now, like a lot of the British planes, they have a lot of internal rigging. The German ones, these ones don't because of the round style of the fuselage. But you're going to have to have all the control wires. Let me get you in shot, sorry there. Uh, yeah, this is a round tile fuselage. You don't have lots of rig cross rigging going anywhere. This is control wires. There are different variants there. Again, which variant are you doing? Uh, the, it's the D, D5 or the D5A. That one, we'll get to that into the back, and then they give you a breakdown picture of all of the painting so what that area should look like once you've got to this stage and it should all be painted. So, these pictures I think really help a lot because you can you can sit there and look at the model in your hand while you've been bit while you're building it, see if you've missed any color, pick it, pin pin it, pick it out with some detail painting. Uh, again, more lovely pictures of the real aircraft. There's your D5, these are D5A, slightly different variants for markings that they're picking out there for different areas. Then you start up onto the engine. Uh, again, which variant are you doing? The From the A to the H has the Daimler Benz 160 horsepower D3 engine. So that's the instructions for that one. 
And then variants I, J, and K have the Dana Benz 180 horsepower D3A engine. That's the build up for that one again on there. And then they give you these wonderful pictures of the planes all laid out. And you can think how many you can build. Oh, and every single one's slightly different. Different markings, different pictures on the side. You can even model a cow if you want to. Absolutely wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. So they, 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 there are so many more decal schemes that you could do for this plane. Absolutely endless nearly. They'd look great if you did them all. Uh, then we go up to mounting the engine into the fuselage. The other side of the fuselage. Join them together. Pick the spawn guns up on the top there. More reference photos for the machine guns and the plane are there. Uh, fitting all the slightly small units, so you've got windscreens on there. Uh, these said these are flare racks on the side, which I never knew they, they used when they're flying, where they had flare racks. It seems to be an optional idea whether they you, you put them on or not. Uh, more real-time photos of the plane. Um, now, if any of you guys have got a Gotha kit and from the wing nuts, this plane here they show was actually a um, this is this was a served as an escort to the Gothas to keep them protected. So that's quite a cool one if you uh, if you can get hold of the specific markings for that, you can mount, put, have it sitting next to your Gotha as a as an escort plane. Uh, you go to start putting on your lower wings up here. Then you start putting on your, your uh, this is a port interplane V struts. And then your carbine struts, cabane, sorry, cabane struts on there. Again, more variants, different, different versions, different numbers for which versions you're doing. You've already got to keep an eye, close eye when you're doing this to which ones you are going to be putting on there. Uh, the radiator into the top wings, alons to the D5, alons to the D5A, attach top wing and the undercarriage, attach your spinner, different variants again for it, final assembly, and then onto your rigging. Now, this isn't this for rigging wise, this isn't too bad. You've got a couple of control wires. Down the front end here, you've got your main common common rigging across the middle, and then you've got some more control wires. And they're, but they're different to different types for optionals and where you want to put them. So you can put them where where you want to on those ones. And then you've got the rigging that goes in between the the, the pilot and the upper wing surface. If you're doing that variant, other variants went along the, the inner wings and went up. This one goes along the top wings and down. Now, let me zoom back out a little bit. Now we start getting on to the decal schemes at the back here. Now, the, the color, the difference of the colorations and how you're gonna paint them, what you wanna do, how far you wanna go with this, it's just stupendously mind boggling and brilliant in this. I mean, it's just wonderful. So you, you, there are some very plain schemes in here. If you, are, you aren't, you haven't got the bravery to really go at it yet there are some quite nice simple schemes in here to do or you go full out on it and you go let's do it so we can go we'll start with the dragon that's quite good no no bare wood on the outside this is all one decal uh, the dragon's all one decal flames are slightly separate on there this is a two-tone camo on the top wings and then single color underneath so that's quite a nice good one and very bright and colorful to do so that's why I Looking at and thinking, yeah, that looks quite a nice, easier one to do. B is a bit more different. Same two-tone colour on the top of the wings. You've got a lot more painting to do for the tail section, for the middle section, and this is then all bare wood because these were these weren't linen uh, on the outside. These were uh, wooden. So you this it all needs either painting or you need to buy some like the usually decals. To go over that and to do that because it's a it's like a type of plywood stripped very thin wood so that it's quite an important sort of visual 
part of this type of plane. So if you're going to go for something like this, plan ahead for that one. Uh, but that's a really nice scheme, and I think Northern Modelers decided to to pick that one, which I think is quite a good one to definitely a good one to go with. Uh, we've got C there, a bit more simple, two tone on the top wings, green tails, nice markings in the middle, painted silver, quite nice. Uh, D again, quite a nice simple one again, a few more decals, a bit more green on that one, two tone on the top wings. E, quite a nice horse or stallion maybe in the in the centre there. Uh, same again, two tone top wings, quite a nice simple basic painting out on that one. Um, then you've got F, Northern, Northern Models again, pick this one, he's gonna take this one with the other, with the B, so you can, you can pick which one he wants. Quite a nice layout actually, all green. He likes his green aircraft. Uh, so that'd be definitely a good one to do, that one. Very nice. Uh, you go down to G. So it looks like you've got Phoenix rising out of the flames on the side. Uh, Two-tone top wings, single-tone fuselage, quite nice. It got to H, which I think I'm going to do. Uh, now this is all. This one is all decal on here and here, and you get a, a, a crest in the middle. I'm not sure whose crest that is. Baines Court. No. I can't tell. Yeah, I can't tell. I'll have to try and look at that, that one. See who that. So that was flown by Lieutenant Wolf, just July, nineteen seventeen. Two victories he's got down to his, on his name. Uh, two tone top wing. Wonderful, wonderful decals on that one. Really looking forward to doing that one. I now you start getting into the lozenge areas. Quite like this one. It's got a fist, iron fist on the side. Joan Crosses, and then this has got lozenge on the top wings. Now, what you got to watch out for when doing these lozenge, and different, slightly, each plane seems to be slightly different. Now, you can just make out these arrows and these lines here. So, it's not just one large decal. You have to have strips of decal to grow across. So, you got to be really careful making sure you line all these up right, correctly on there and there, and then slightly different colour for the underneath. On that so that's really quite uh that'll be a challenge good challenge it'll be a challenge um and then there, there's j which i really quite like which then this one is uh flown by joseph my uh 30 victories so this is a very very well flown aircraft and i love the scheme all wooden fuselage large decals down there and then lozenge top and bottom lower wings um yeah, I think that's that's gonna have to be one that's gonna get built. And then down to like the K at the end there, quite a nice moon on the side, lozenge, and then painted over the top with the green stripes. So that'll be quite a challenge to get correct. And then it shows you a lower shot with the lozenge on the fuselage. Now, like I was saying, there's two variants on there. There is only two D5As buildable in this kit. That's the last two. J and K, they're the only two D5As. The rest of them are all D5s, straight D5s. <clears throat> so I know I'm going to be doing, it's like I'm going to be doing that one. So I'm going to build one D5, one D5A. Get used to most most out of it to the variants on different engines on there. Um, they're all looking super. Nice picture at the end there with the dragon. Uh, shout out at the end there to all, all the guys that help help build these kits. Mark Miller, Steve Anderson, Ronnie Barr, and Richard Alexander. And that's the instructions gone through. Uh, let me open up the plastic and see what's in there. Okay, so we can start off with the fuselage. Now these are, you can just make out this panels, lines, all on there. So each one of these panels will be a different piece of wood if you do a wood finish on that. Um, the detail on them is so nice. Now this is, they are HGW kits and Edward sets to add more detail to the exterior of these. And I'll be honest, I've been looking at them, but honestly, I don't know if you really need them. I mean, the, the, the detail's just so crisp on everywhere on these kits. Absolutely wonderful, absolutely wonderful. So you get radiators there, very nicely done. Uh, front engine 
sides there. Nose cone. Uh, your back of your spinner. A few of the little pipes, pipe work across the top there. Uh, as usual, very, very little flash. Actually, do you know what? I'm not going to say. I don't think there's any flash anywhere. No. No, not a spot. So it's a little bit there, but that's it. There'll be a little bit of a mould seam on, on them, just slightly. Nothing major though, just a little bit of a sand back and gets, gets rid of them. Uh, and there's a lot of, there's a quite a few EPMs on the inside of this fuselage, but most of these you will never see it again once it's all closed up. So I wouldn't say they're too much of a worry. They're not too deep either if you were going to be worried about them. There's a few up there where the, where the engine sit, sits next to the engine, but it's all hidden underneath plastic and the and the cockpit. So I wouldn't worry too much. There's a lot in there though. I will say that there is a lot in there. I mean, there's 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 virtually three to four, two sorry two to three on each on any of these little individual panels in there. But I think it was needed to make sure it, it gets out of the mold cleanly. So next bag, next sprue up is the engine and the props. You actually get four different variants of prop propellers in this kit. You, this now this is the Mercedes D3 engine. Absolutely beautiful, lovely mouldings detail on there. Propellers look lo lovely. Great little bolt head detail in the end there. All the little rocker arms. And they're looking beautiful. That's the intake wiring, the wiring for the probably, actually, probably a fuel rail on there. These are parts of the exhaust. Main lower bottom end of the engine there. All very nice detailed, nearly no flash. Again, actually, no, none anywhere. A little bit of mould lines on a couple of little pieces to clean up. But nothing of any real worry at all. Let's have a look on the wings. Now these are, the wings aren't too big on this one. I've been doing the Salmson and it's quite a it's quite a chunky size. This is this will end up being rough just over eleven inches wide on that one. So it's quite a nice small size. Uh if you if you like your centimeters, that is about twenty nine centimeters wide. Uh the fuselage. I'm gonna is quickly get that little measurement with the spinner. Let's say with a spinner on there, 23. So it's quite a dinky size plane. Quite a dinky size. Nice, nice. To, it's really nice to build up. The wings, all one piece. You don't have to join anything. Two halves. Lovely rib detail. I mean, that's really quite nice. I mean, with with you can see it's you can see those like sh slightly shiny lines. On there as they show up you got to be really careful when you're painting that with your primer that you don't actually lose this detail on there and then when you're painting you have to try and get them to come out when you're doing your weathering on them so you don't want to lose it that's really quite nice I'm just about here that way you run your finger over it the difference in height on them absolutely perfect lovely wings absolutely lovely no real twist to them. There's a slight curve to them, but I'm quite sure that's because they're meant to have a slight curve to them. It's only slight. Yep, looks wonderful. Absolutely wonderful there. I'll grab a clear sprue and just have a little sprue. Quickly. Clear parts. 
as clear as you want them to be. I mean, they are really, yeah, they're really quite nice. They're a bit, dis they're nice and clear, but they are a bit distorted just because of the, si the shape of them and the curvature of them. Um, but I mean, they're so small, you don't look through them, you'll just see them sitting in front of the pilot's cockpit. But they're nice and cl nice, clean and clear looking, so that's fine. Now there's six of these sprues. These are the wheels, centers of the wheels down there, struts, and a two different variants of machine gun on there. Again, with wing nut kits, these aren't hollowed out or slide molded on the ends. So whether you wanna drill them out or do a metal barrel, up to you on that one. But as everything, it's very nice. They haven't given you weighted tires on this one. Sometimes they give you the option, or is it slightly? No, uh, give you the option of giving it a slight weighted look to them. So you might wanna flatten off the bottom just on the one it, so they sit and look a little more correct for the weight. But the machine guns have got some nice detail. On them, the coolant jackets looks nice. Yeah, all looking good. Very good. And then we've got one more sprue left. I'll put them to that side. Which are now the internals. So you have your ailerons on the end there. You have your exhaust. On the instructions, it does say to drill out the end of the exhaust to make it more realistic. Uh, I think a slide molding technology could be used quite nice in some of these little parts, but with the cost of the kits as they are, maybe it it does maybe just keep the, the cost down so it's, they don't go astronomically uh, high on them. Uh, nice wing strut details on there. There's all the sensor ribbings for the plane. All nicely detailed on there. Pilot seat, as plain as the pilot seats were in those days. There's your ammo feed chute. Some of the smaller details on there. So yeah, all together, very nice. Nothing broken, nothing looking mismolded. Very very good indeed very good indeed and um, so that's plastic gone through uh, let me get the decal, decal sheets out and we can go through them so while getting out the decal sheets also the photo which is in there so you get in there you do get seat belts uh, you do get some areas for the front end where the where the machine gun sits radiator grills gun sights and what looks to be something probably I think for the interior on there. All good, very nice. Two little placards down the bottom there for a D5 or D5A if you want if you want to display it as well. Very nice. Now onto the decals. There is the little decal sheet there for the flames. And uh, not isn't sure why they thought they had to do it separately. All in register, all very fine. I slightly well says on there just a five correction so there must be a slight imperfection on the original decals so they corrected it with that little deck on there I'll have a little look in a second to see if I can see what the problems with the flames are now all of these are printed by Castograph so you can truly ima imagine these are absolutely beautiful I mean they are fully in register bright vibrant clean the most minimal about a backing film that's needed. Just exactly what you need. Absolutely wonderful. So there's, there's the centre ones that which I'm going to be doing. You've got to wrap this all around the plane, which is going to be very tricky and a bit scary, but it just looks wonderful. So wonderful. Yeah. Move on to the second sheet here. Ooh, let me move my glass of water away for this section because otherwise <laughs> we don't want to wreck them now, do we? 
So there's the sheet with the dragon on. So on this bit here, it actually shows red flames on there. So you're gonna have to put the yellow flames over the top of those red pieces there. Not the worst thing in the world. Shouldn't have too much of a worry. Or whether you try and actually cut them out around the mouth. Not sure. Um, what's quite good, I did see in one of this one was, it showed bare wood through underneath. Now they haven't relied on you to paint the bare wood. They've actually put what looks like a wood decal in the middle of the star. So that's quite a nice, good little point. Stallion, Phoenix from the flames. All the slightly smaller markings. It looks like it's got a plane uh, guide to all the little bits and pieces for inside. Warning stickers. Um, what looked to be REF roundels and then a date underneath each roundel. This is quite cool, so it tells them it gives you different amounts of uh, REF that they've shot down. That's quite a nice little little bit to be able to stick on there. Different uh, name badges on the end there. More drum symbols on there name badges some band as well for, for there and then you've got all the sets of dials along the top there for them all look wonderful absolutely wonderful next sheet is more of the german crosses that you're going to need for doing all the different variants on there again in register absolutely neat neatly to the edge of the cross for that. Absolutely wonderful. So good. And then you come to the lozenge. Now you get a lot. Get the little books out. So you get quite a lot in there. So you get oh, the lighter lozenge style. They look great. Absolutely wonderful. That's the lighter style. Like I was saying, there's gonna be strips of them going down those wings. So I'd hope that they are actually the right width for doing that area and then you just butt them up next to each other. You get one, two, three of those in there. You then get the darker lozenge. Again, they're in strips, so I'd imagine they're going to be the right width for when putting them on the plane. And you get one, two, three of those. And then you get these bands of colour. You get yellow, red, and a blue. And uh, I think it's the blue is the only one you need for this plane. Um, they're really thin, fine decals. They're each, every single one is an individual strip. I, I didn't see what to what the parts they're actually for. But even afterwards, if you're doing other things, these would be absolutely wonderful if you want to do pinstriping on like a model or a car kit. I mean, I, I could, I could seriously see see a, a couple of my friends making use of these for doing car, car uh, pinstripes. Really nice, very nice indeed. And that is all your decal sheets. Uh, let me have a tidy up, and we'll uh, have a quick look over, think through what we've got there. So that's what you get in this Greens Hal trilogy box. You get a lot of plastic. You get a lot of kit for your money. Um, it is quite a large payout at the beginning for the cost of it. Like I said, if you can maybe split it with a friend or two friends, it uh, makes it brilliantly cost-worthy for that one. The options for the markings, brilliant. Instructions, brilliant. Um, as with all wing nut, king, wing, wing nut, wing, wing nut wings kits, it's going to be a pleasure to build. Uh, they are hard work, but in a really good way. Uh, lots of detail painting, lots of fine work to be done on them. Um, highly recommended if you like these, if you like your biplanes, not um, uh, rigging heavy. So you, there is some on there, but nothing too much hard work in there. Um, yeah, good boxing, very nice, very nice. Uh, if if you're thinking of it, I'd say get one. Uh, but I'm sure that's up to you guys. Uh, thank you for watching the review. Hope you find it interesting. Uh, please check out my other ones on the channel. And have a good day.